is good everybody welcome back to another my damn toys video today ladies and gentlemen we are ranking wwe elite series 87 from worst to best as well as covering the last two figures in the set in oscar and candice LeRae. now so far this set has pretty much surprised me man the introduction of the double jointed arms and the way these figures feel in the hand has been fantastic and overall i'm finding myself uh kind of lost in a little dilemma when it comes to ranking this set because it's actually surprised me so much at getting every figure right and all of those different things but it's going to be interesting man it's going to be interesting but before we can rank the set we do have to dive into the last two figures in the set which is Asuka and Candice LeRae so I'm going to move the rest of the wave out of the way and let's go ahead and dive into this thing bro so as you guys can see we do have Asuka and Candice LeRae the women's figures have been improved so very much since you know I'd say maybe the last 10 to 12 series the women's figures have really picked up in quality and it's been very nice to see they haven't been nearly as hard to pose it felt good in the hand and it's just been refreshing man totally refreshing but if you guys would like to grab any of these figures or elite Series 87 overall. Go over to Ringside Collectibles, use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% when shopping over there. Get in on all the pre-orders from SDCC, AEW, and WWE action figures as a whole. But looking right here, man, pretty good stuff right there. First time in the line, Candice LeRae got beautiful looking Asuka over here. On the side, you get two images of the ladies there. On the back, you get a little bio read. If you'd like to read it, you can pause it now. Rest of the figures in the wave, which we've already reviewed. Another image of both talents there. And that pretty much takes care of our packaging, guys. So with that being said, let's go ahead and crack Asuka and Candice LeRae out of their packaging. Alright guys, here's Asuka and Candice LeRae out of the packaging. Liking the colors that we got going on with these, these figures do feel good in the hand. I do have my gripes about them, which we are going to get into, of course. But before we do that, guys, we do have to run through the accessories and a closer look at themselves. I know one thing you probably are going to notice is going to be Candice LeRae's height. Now, she is listed at 5 foot 2 inches, and Asuka is 5 foot 3, but it looks like she's like 2 or 3 inches taller than her here, referencing this figure to figure comparison. And we are going to see what she looks like up next to other figures and stuff but I can say without a doubt I think the Candice LeRae is too short and we will get into that and kind of break that down and everything we do have some interesting tooling going on but let's shut up and dive into Candice LeRae's accessories and Candice LeRae and then we'll run it back take a closer look at Asuka and Asuka stuff and then we will rank Elite Series 87 from worst to best so getting into Candice LeRae's accessories guys starting out with her entrance vest right here this is a pretty nice accessory I will say it's got some really great colors going on you guys can see sort of an ombre light blue and green tone going on you do have studs on on the side there and sculpted in the middle got a nice collar pop to it the green and purple does pop off nice she has like these pixie wings or something like that coming off the sides which look really good i like the interesting shape they have and again all the ombre colors going on looks pretty nice you have like the pinks and the blues and the purples all mixing together which looks really good it is rubber but you know it's a vest so it works out good for me it does plug in in the front as well if you guys wanted to do that you can do that honestly i'd probably just snip that off and have a vest but you know you can do that if you'd like there is the candice the Ray entrance vest. I like it. You know, it's a solid little piece. You know, anything featuring like high details is always going to be rubber. Outside of that, guys, she also has mic holding hands that do have some silver nail polish on there, which look pretty good. We've seen these women's hands before. And then out of the packaging, she comes with these entrance hands, which are just like a high five hand or wide open hands like that. And then over here, she has the exact same thing. So mic holding hands, wide open entrance hands like Finn Balor slash John Cena, and then a nice entrance vest. So starting out with the head sculpt of the Candice LeRae, man, I I think the likeness is there. Is it a perfect head sculpt? I don't think so, but it is pretty good. I think she, they do capture the likeness of Candice LeRae here. I like the, the purple or light violet hair they got going on. I will say that I think it may be a little bit too saturated. I feel like maybe a lighter flat color would have probably looked a little bit better, but there is the hair sculpt on there. Got a nice violet color to it. You know, it gets the job done. Again, likeness is pretty solid in my honest opinion. Going on the top right there, you get like the little cut opening there. You do have the purples and the pinks. Silver studs with the black as well. She does have single jointed arms. Double jointed arms not implemented on either of these women's figures here today. But the articulation is still pretty good, I would say. I'd still say, you know, you get a pretty good elbow bend in there compared to other figures. Going down to the bottoms, you do get the green, pink, silver, and purple colorway going on right there. Silver on the back, silver on the back of the top as well. You get the pink and purple wrist tape going on. She does have the upper thigh cut, which looks pretty good. And I think, yeah, her joints are pinless. She's got the purple knee pads and the purple under, or the uh, knee tape 
tape or whatever you want to call it the knee wraps right there and then this is a very interesting tooling aspect right here guys you guys will see on her black boots or black shoes you guys will see that the the boot cut isn't at the ankle it's actually at the lower leg so like this lower part of the calf right here actually rotates and the uh, the boots are just uh, here like in a standard position so if you want to rotate it there it's going to rotate the whole lower leg there silver laces on there which look good and I think this doesn't look bad I just feel like she looks really really short like super duper short and I like the figure a lot I just feel like she's super duper short like I like the tooling and everything she feels pretty good in the hand as well the articulation is good uh, like the figure feels good in hand I would say she does lean forward sometimes with these shoe molds but I don't know man she's just really really short which you guys will see in our figure comparisons right now so for your Candice LeRae figure comparisons guys you guys will see here that the Alexa Bliss figure is actually taller than the Candice LeRae and I'm pretty sure Candice LeRae is two inches taller than Alexa Bliss I could be wrong about that I could have swore Alexa Bliss was five foot or five one but you guys can see she does stand over her maybe the Candice LeRae needs these thighs and the Alexa Bliss needs these thighs I, I don't know what's going on there but you guys can see the height comparison between all three of them and if you guys wanted to see what Candice LeRae looks like up next to Johnny Gargano here is Candice and Johnny right there and I think these look good together side by side when you put Candice LeRae up next to the women's figures is when you kind of notice how short she is but I feel like these scale pretty well together even though she yeah she's probably a little bit too short there to be honest with you but they look good up next to each other I will say that they look just like them they got the true effects and everything going on so as far as likeness and posability I, I, I don't mind it bro now for Asuka's accessories guys much like Candice LeRae they don't come with a ton right I mean Asuka she is going to come with her signature mask right here and I have it upside down like a dumb idiot but you guys can see here she does have another mask here I, th I think this is like our fourth or fifth mask that she's came with before you have like these blue lines going around nice red paint going on gold chains dripping down the front they are molded on there that aren't you know they aren't loose or anything but you can stick this on the face I'm pretty sure and actually uh can this even I don't even know if this goes on the figure will this go on the figure okay it will go on the figure but you have to like tuck this little peg behind the hair over here and then it will sit in place pretty good so that's that's not bad at first I was worried that they didn't even make it where it fits the face but it looks pretty good on there so if you guys want to put your mask on your Asuka there it is out of the packaging she also comes with mic holding hands with no nail polish or anything but it does have the little black uh, sleeves design going on there and then she also comes with slapping hands or relaxed hands so you get the slapping slash relaxed hands and then you get the mic holding hands outside of hands and a mask man that does it for Asuka's accessories so getting into Asuka man starting out at the head sculpt I will say that I feel like mine is a little bit off like my left eye is just a little bit shifted as you guys can see it kind of looks like she's a little bit crazy eyed however I still like the head sculpt I like the face paint going on I like the ombre hair going on as well I really like how we got this like half pink and then you got like the yellow translucent going into the blue slash green color really like the way that looks I like her top with the black and the gold and the red got these nice designs going on you do have this nice like stomach cover right there in the black which she started wearing not too long ago she's got the dual sleeves on there single jointed arms like we commented on red and black and gold sleeves black bicep band going down into the crotch mold you do have the red and the gold tying around sort of like the thong over the pants is kind of like a thing that she's been doing for a very long time you do have like this nice rope that is molded onto the crotch actually and it's like a plastic sort of material it's like a yellow rope almost even though i think it's supposed to be gold it's not a big deal you do get some nice molded crotch details right here upper thighs are molded as well she does have pinless knees and uh lower calves there you get the black and gold on the knee pads you get the red and black there nice sleeves detail and then you have the black and gold and red kick pads which look really really good and what's weird is like her kick pads are different from everybody else's if you guys have ever noticed that with the women's figures Asuka's are always like kind of like that like more stiff square look and then everybody else's are completely different so I don't know what's up with that knee a little bit stiff right there I will say like god in heaven I can't even bend that second joint because of how stiff it is which is one thing I will say about this figure it is a little bit stiff maybe it'll loosen up a little bit and it'll get better but would you rather your figure be too loose or too stiff I feel like when it's too stiff it's like a basic and you may snap it in half or it may feel like it's gonna snap in half and then when it's too loose it's like god I can't even like hang on to it so I don't know what's worse honestly well you gotta find that happy medium there bro but figure feels good the hand outside of some stiffness and it looks good too like I, I like the attire and I like everything going on with it I wish my head wasn't misprinted I feel like that's gonna hurt it in the ranking now because this set's actually pretty damn bomb bro like getting into it I, I was really worried that this set would be like I guess it's kind of a boring set but the figures kick a you know what I'm saying but as far as your Asuka figure comparisons are concerned guys here is the network spotlight Asuka up next to the new Asuka and you guys can see the head sculpt 
bumps there and the difference in gear and she has that same like square kick pattern or kick pad style and uh her her, her figures are pretty damn great this is what our fourth one which is pretty good I, I like the oscar figures uh i think my other two ones are at my brother's house because that's like one of his favorite wrestlers so i don't know these are pretty good man i'm enjoying it i don't know which one i like more though i, I really like the network spotlight i just hate how loose the upper diaphragm is here like it doesn't really hinder anything it's just very annoying to watch it do that like this one doesn't do that so it's a very it's still very poseable and everything like that so that's very nice but yeah that's yeah hate to see it. Alright guys, it is that time of the video where we rank this set from worst to best Elite Series 87, man. Again, a ton of people came into this set saying that it was boring, saying that it was uninteresting, that they were skipping the whole set and I feel like you may have made a mistake, bro. I feel like you made a, made a mistake there, Brad. Very good set. Like, in terms of the names and everything, maybe not, and like needs, but overall quality of the set is very daggum good. Anyways, you guys know how we rank this set. Excitement level for the figure, how it feels in the hand, posability, etc accessories, likeness, all of these different things play a role in how well you rank. Also, just because a figure comes in at number one doesn't mean it's without fault, and just because a figure comes in at the bottom doesn't mean that it doesn't have any redeeming qualities whatsoever, and that is especially true with this set because I like every figure in this set. So let's go ahead and rank these guys. So for at the bottom of my ranking, man, I'm going with the Asuka figure. It pains me a ton because I really like this figure. I think it's fantastic, but it's a little bit too stiff for me, and my eyes are misprinted, which really sucks because, you know, it's kind of out of my control, and I really love this figure, and I love Asuka, so it's ridiculous that this has to come in at the bottom, but a figure had to go here, and I could not put one of the other figures there in all in all seriousness. So my number five ranking is actually going to be Candice LeRae. Very good figure again, but I feel like she's a little bit too short. I like the new boots here, and also her ankles are kind of loose, like again, like I don't know what's up with figures and loose ankles and why they gotta do this to me, but the Candice LeRae figure is very nice, but she is a little, you know, a little bit too short in my opinion. And yeah, that's really all I have to say. Both women's figures are very good, though. Like, very, very good. Coming in at number four, man, this is where it gets difficult, man, but I have to say it's gonna go to Otis. Now, this pains me again because this figure feels really good in the hand. The posability is really, really solid as well. I don't like the little gappage that we got going on on the arms. It may be fixable, but straight out of the packaging, you know, and then the double joint arms are just delicious. The rest of these figures have double joint arms, so that's nice. I like the cloth t-shirt. Repeat head sculpt. It's kind of out dated already now even though i know apollo's outdated already now too but overall really really good otis figure man i i literally love this figure i think it's really good i will say that the chest looks a bit odd you know with like the ultimate everybody was commenting ultimate edition otis which is hilarious because that's pretty much what it is but this is a really good figure even though it comes in at number four coming in at number three man i'm gonna go with santos escobar really enjoy this figure i think it is great i love the the i love the mass head sculpt i like the formula i love the double jointed arms the posability i like the NXT Cruiserweight Championship that we get. It's a very nice figure overall. I think he's really good in the ring. I wasn't necessarily looking forward to the figure in any way, honestly. However, after getting it in hand, man, very nice, very solid, and excited to add him to the MDT figure collection. All right, guys, two and one. Which ones do you think are going to bring home the gold? I'm going number two, Braun Strowman. Number one, Apollo Crews. And number two, this Braun Strowman is the best Strowman they've ever made. I really like the bald head sculpt. The double jointed arms are definitely fantastic. Fantastic. I love all the sculpting and tooling we have on these legs. The legs are surprisingly very, very poseable as well. And typically, I don't like these like shield-like legs, but the figure feels really nice in the hand, man. Also, you have this cloth camo hoodie vest. It's not a hoodie, you idiot, but you guys get the point. It's very, very sick, very solid and standard indeed. And I enjoy this Braun Strowman a whole lot. And then number one, man, is the Apollo. I just love this. I love the gear. I love how it feels in the hand. I love the head sculpt. I love that we get the brand new... United States Championship with the figure, and it looks really good on here. Of course, we do have the Chase variant version, but these double jointed arms just make me so happy. The U.S. Championship looks so great. The blue gear looks so great, and overall, I think the Apollo is the best in the set. I just, uh, I like to pose it around. It feels so good in the hand. I really like the new shoulders they gave this guy, and just at the end of the day, man, that's what I'm going with. So let's recap, guys. We have number one, Apollo. Number two, Braun Strowman. Number three, Santos Escobar. Number for Otis, number five, Larray, and coming at the bottom, which pains me again, is Asuka. Now, again, if you guys would like to grab this set, definitely go grab it at Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% when shopping over there. Really underrated set, man. Definitely, like, if you find these at retail or whatever, if you don't feel like ordering them, man, definitely grab them while they're at retail. You're gonna be shocked by this set. I was entirely shocked. I was like, wait, what the hell just happened?
Cap and Brad, so it's a very, very good set, even though it's not the most exciting set. The quality of these figures is outrageous. And this shout-out is going to go to Nigel Parrott, who says, Braun Strowman head scan is MDT's angry face when he sees bad figures. And yeah, Brad, you know I'm going to have to let him have it if, you know, we see, we see a bad figure. That's just the way it is, man. Got to let him know about it. And uh, I try not to hold any... I don't pull any punches, man. I want to give you guys an accurate description of the figure. I want you guys to listen to my opinion on a figure and be like, okay, that gives me all I need to know. When you watch my reviews, I want it to help you decide on whether you want a figure or you don't want a figure. And that's hopefully what happens, man. But a huge shout out to Nigel for the comment, man. I'm getting out of here. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Don't cross the line like the, like, uh, like the Candice LeRae hype. You cross the line, I've been